evening. Uh, both my parents taught high school. My mom was an English teacher in high school. My father was a woodworking teacher in high school. And please don't tell them I said this, but they have uh, you and then have an incredibly important job. And you really work really hard, and I do appreciate everything you do for your students and for your time this evening. Um, I'll start with my story briefly. I'll talk a little bit about some of the issues that we see in my industry, which is civil engineering and construction. I'll talk about ways that uh, my industry, and hopefully in partnership with you all, is encouraging students to seek out careers in civil engineering and construction. I'll give you my, uh, my brief take on diversity and a few words of advice for your students. So that's me. Um, graduated from the Royal Military College of Canada about 20 years ago as a civil engineer. Uh, joined the company I'm with now about two years after that. And the company I'm with now, MVP, we specialize in construction management. So uh, anybody that's going to do a building, highway, road, any kind of infrastructure, you're going to hire a general contractor. Uh, that's not us. Uh, owners, you know, fund the work. That's not us either. Generally, we represent the owners. So, um, project I'm currently associated with, one of the projects I'm associated with, for anybody that's driven through Atlas Station Road near um, uh, Atlee High, is um, familiar with this project. Myself and my staff are representing Hanover County to ensure that this project is built on time, on budget, in a safe manner that uh, doesn't. Uh, detriment to the environment, so let's get it done. Uh, I have served uh, as an inspector, uh, I've served as an engineer, I've served as a project manager. My current assignment is to uh, lead a group of about 20 professionals in the Richmond area as a branch manager, so it takes on more of a business management role, less so uh, as an engineer. Uh, I am a professional engineer, uh, so that means that I've been uh, qualified by sat taking the exam. Professional engineering licensure is sort of ubiquitous across all engineers. So civil, mechanical, electrical engineers uh, generally uh, sit for that exam and, and take that uh, accreditation. Uh, specific to my industry, which is construction, are certified construction managers and uh, planning and scheduling professionals. So again, accreditation uh, unique to, to my industry. So, uh, you know, Duncan's take here on some of the issues that are facing us as a society and where you know, I see you and your students uh, playing a big role in the coming years. You know, no secret, uh, that is not a Virginia Bridge that's out of Massachusetts, but it's, it's out there. You know, what's happening in this photo is the steel, the reinforcing bars that are embedded in that concrete over time uh, pick up moisture, pick up salt that seeps through the rocks. Um, as they rust, they expand. And literally, the concrete pops right off these bridges. So these bridges built 40, 50, 60 years ago, it's no secret that the next generation, your students are going to be ahead of um, the curve on, on fixing that. Uh, at the same time, you know, it should be no secret as well that there's, there's not an unlimited pool of funds out there to rebuild this infrastructure. So your students and you are going to have to come up with ways to not only get it rebuilt, but get it rebuilt better. Uh, productivity is a major issue right now in construction. You, know, you think about uh, even things like agriculture or the auto industry. You know, the auto industry can rebuild a car today uh, 10, 100 times faster than they could 50 years ago. The technology that we're using to rebuild these bridges hasn't changed much at all. Uh, we're still doing things almost the same way we did 50 years ago. And to be frank, that's just unacceptable because we're not getting productivity that we should for the investment. Uh, and sustainability. You know, we're not doing things that are helping the carbon footprint so much. We're generally uh, intensive in the use of natural resources, including carbon-based fuels. So these issues are the things that you know, I hope your students and yourself are excited about getting ahead of. There's a lot of opportunity there. You know, then just within the business itself, we're dealing with these issues every day, including things like the workforce. I think for every, let's say, two or three retirees, there's, you know, we're lucky, one or two new students coming into the field. So we, we know we're not replacing our workforce at the rate that we need to. Uh, we're also seeing retention issues, to be quite frank. Construction is a tough business. Uh, it demands a lot from 
this course that doesn't generally pay as well as some other engineering firms. So keeping students and keeping young professionals in construction uh, has been and continues to be an issue for our business. Uh, quality of work, you know, generally quality is pretty high, uh, especially for those that have been in the service for a long time. Unfortunately, to my first bullet, those are the people that are tending to age out right now. So instilling that quality of work in the younger folks that are coming in is uh, continuing to be an issue. And the last note I've got on there is technology. Um, you know, I, I know I did say that productivity isn't where it needs to be, but there are game changers, particularly in things like computer-aided design, where we do need you and your students to be you know, the next wave to make sure that we do get these productivities going. <coughs> so, uh, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about encouraging students to consider civil engineering, to consider construction. A lot of this is pretty personal. Why did I decide to become a civil engineer? Uh, so the, the ring on the, on the right here, that's the <coughs> engineer ring. Uh, for civil engineers that receive one of these rings, you wear it on the pinky finger of your right hand. And the idea being that you can hear it clicking as you write along. Uh, the legend, I think, goes that the original rings were built from steel from a bridge that had failed. So again, an audible, constant reminder of what an engineer can do if they don't do their job correctly. The rings are presented by another sibling or by another engineer. My grandfather was a mechanical engineer who came to the ceremony, presented the ring, and swear an oath. Um, so I bring that up because this, the field of civil engineering and construction has a long history of success. A lot of very proud people, a lot of great accomplishments, monumental accomplishments. So. That got instilled in me. I'm not sure if it was anybody that put it to me, but I, I think one day I looked up at a bridge and said, wow, who, who did that? That's, that's pretty cool. So, um, you know, your students should be excited about that. I talked briefly about some of the problems in society in general and the things that are facing our industry. So your students should be excited about civil engineering and about construction because it's an opportunity to get up ahead to literally make the world a better place. Uh, the money's not bad. The money in civil engineering and engineering in general is pretty good. So if your students want to bring some of the some of the green stuff home, it's, uh, I'd recommend it. Uh, you know, I think about civil engineering and builders, and we've been building since the time of the pyramids. So that job hasn't gone away, and I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. So if your students are concerned that they're wasting their time learning this stuff, not at all. They're going to use it for the rest of their lives. And the last point I put on there, you know, the low barrier to entry. Uh, certainly, if you intend to get a PhD in uh, civil engineering, you know, you're going to have to spend some time in college, but that's extremely rare. Uh, I'm hiring people right now that have two year degrees at a community college, and we're paying them quite well. You know, they're not civil engineers yet, but a lot of them continue to go to school and become civil engineers. Uh, there's, there's plenty of good resources out there. I'd be happy to talk. You know, about specific cases, <coughs> local cases, but I would encourage any student that is interested in construction, uh, there should not necessarily be a, a money or a time issue to, to get into our industry. And, um, you know, as far as encouraging students, one of the things that's helped me throughout my career has been a, a mentorship program where somebody that's a couple of years ahead of me, not necessarily a supervisor, but somebody that can mentor me, give me some advice, help me work through issues. So, where those opportunities exist, I would highly encourage students and young engineers to pursue. So I used to, you know, roll my eyes when the diversity subject came around. So I was just, you know, who cares, right? Until I became responsible for profitability in my company, and it was pointed out to me that you're, a, you know, what? If you ignore, let's say, half the population, and there's a big chunk of people out there that are underrepresented in my industry. And that's hurting us. So it's just flat out good business to bring those people into the conversation and make them part of our industry. Uh, for it to work at a business level, it has to come down from the CEO level, which it does at my company. And it makes it okay for everybody in the company to move in that direction and make it a, something that we're really doing to make our industry and make our business better. For those that have uh, joined our company that are maybe underrepresented, um, the mentorship again has been extremely valuable. So a young female engineer might be working with one of our senior female managers, and that gives them that conduit to talk and to make sure that they're um, 
learning together and growing. Uh, other groups like Women in Construction, the National Association of Women in Construction and Women Engineers, you know, they do great work. Again, it's that networking, it's that mentoring. So I encourage uh, your students that maybe don't look like me, that want to be engineers, and you know, they shouldn't feel any, um, any reason not to join civil engineering or get into the construction industry. I did look it up, and in 2014, NAWIC did a survey uh, through Bureau of Labor and Statistics, only 10% of my industry is uh, female. You know, it was three years ago, I don't think it's changed very much, so I know we got a long way to go. Uh, I think this is my last slide, so a few quick points for your students, and um, you know, if they were sitting here today, I'd tell them, schools, school's fun, school's a privilege. Get into it, guys. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. Smile, laugh. You, know, you have some great resources, some great teachers out there. So really dig into it. Um, it's not always fun. Nobody likes final exams. Nobody <laughs> likes cramming. But it does get better. You get through it, and you get into your industry, and you start to really use what you've learned. So uh, I didn't. I didn't love school the whole time I was there, but I'm really glad I went through it and got my degree. And then. Um, you know, this goes for students and for the, the young engineers that work with me and the, even the young technicians. I just tell them, like, get involved in your industry. Get outside. Don't, you know, get locked into your little group and, and miss out on some really big opportunities. Uh, a couple of things. Um, quick shot, is anybody here participate with Mission Tomorrow? Uh, it's hosted by Chamber RBA. It used to be known as the Greater Richmond Chamber of Commerce. And it's an event. Uh, it was held last year for the first time. Next year at the raceway, and you know, we bust in. Thank you. We bust in thousands of students from around the region. Good, good. So it, you know, it's not necessarily a STEM-related event, but it's a great career opportunity for eighth graders and middle schoolers that are on that you know decision where they've got to get into high school and start making their programming decisions. So check that out. Um, speaking for civil engineers, do check out the ASC American Society of Civil Engineers page as well. Engineers Week is in February. ASCE hosts the popsicle stick competition. Has anybody participated in that? You know, just an excellent opportunity, not only for the, the students to get involved and have a little fun, but they can come here to the Science Museum. Me and my colleagues are here. We're talking about civil engineers. We're talking to the parents. We talk about how much money civil engineers make. The parents' eyes open up. <laughs> They're elbowing their kids. Um, and uh, the other thing that ASC is hosting, um, I think on your slide you had mentioned Thinking Big, the, uh, the movie that's coming out about engineering, uh, May 20th, uh, ASC is hosting a, a screening of that here. So, um, that's uh, a couple of things for your students and yourselves to, to check out. Thank you.